how do you learn who invented Hangul? Oh, actually, in North Korea, in school, they don't teach that Hangul was made by King Sezong. No? Know? No. When I was uh, young, you know, I didn't know that Hangul was made by King Sezong. No. No. So, in North Korea, at which age do you start learning Hangul? Oh, the school uh, teach to how to write, you know, in the first grade of primary school. So, in North Korea, children uh, start to learn how to write at the age of six. But there is still kindergarten in North Korea, right? Yes, uh, kindergarten, one year of kindergarten is also one part of 12-year education system. You know, what strikes me every time I see these uh, clips of North Korean kindergartners is that they're so brainwashed at such a young age about the propaganda of North Korea. Oh, uh, in North Korea, uh, children are never too young, you know, uh, to be educated in the process of indoctrination. Right, so I think that's another key difference that's evolved between South and North Korea over the six, seven decades of uh, division. And I think that's something very interesting that we could talk about today. Yes, okay. Well, sure. So why don't we delve into that further? So let's take a step further into how these five, six-year-olds are indoctrinated. Mm. In North Korea, our children are never too young to be indoctrinated. The whole of North Korean education system uh, brainwash its people with the idea that the kings, you know, the leaders of North Korea are divine beings, you know, uh, like that, for instance, you know, all this, the personal cult education uh, revolves around Kim Il-sung, uh, portraying Kim Il-sung as anti-Japanese, you know, the hero. Uh, and even now, you know, the uh, Kim Il-sung is regarded uh, as eternal president of North Korea, even after two decades of his death. Mm -hmm. And Kim Jong-il is portrayed like he was born in Mountain Baekdu and the red, you know, uh, bright uh, night star. But actually Kim Jong-il was born in Siberia, mm -hmm. Russia, mm -hmm. you know, and all these uh, family business of a uh, personal cult now handed over to Kim Jong-un after the death of uh, Kim Jong-il. In North Korea, you know, the people can't just escape, you see, the Kims for 365 years, days, uh, five days, you know. For instance, in every offices, classrooms, even the passenger train cars are featured with the portraits of Kim Il-sung and Kim Jong-il. And these portraits must be cleaned with a special cloth every morning. Wow. <laughs> yes, and also, uh, I think you have seen that North Korean people are enforced to uh, carry a small, you know, the badges of Kim Il-sung and Kim Jong-il on their left chest, you know, to be close to the heart. And also, uh, for instance, you know, in kindergartens, you know, uh, children even start uh, to be brainwashed at the very early age. For instance, when the milk arrives for lunch, in kindergartens, then children would line up to fill their cups with the milk and the teacher would then ask the children something like, uh, do you know where this milk came from? The, the milk was sent by Marshal Kim Jong-un and thanks to Marshal Kim Jong-un's love and consideration, now we are drinking the milk, you see, something like this. For, and 
In North Korea, the schools don't teach history. They only teach the revolutionary history of uh, Kim's family. Mm -hmm. And uh, in North Korea, uh, uh, children uh, do not know that Korean characters were created by King Sejong. Right. You know, and in schools, when you solve mathematic problems, you know, uh, the school, the teachers usually teach the students like uh, this many of uh, Kim Il Sung's anti Japanese guerrilla fighters and this many of Japanese soldiers and X many Japanese soldiers were killed. So the all the curriculum of education is going on in that way. You know, one of the biggest, I guess, globally well known facts about South Korea is a South Korean parent's passion for their children's education. We have terms like helicopter moms, tiger moms, and whatnot. Is there such thing in North Korea? And are there private schools in North Korea? Oh, there is no any private school. But in North Korea uh, as well, there is a great enthusiasm by parents for their uh, children. Uh, but in North Korea, uh, private tutoring is illegal. The, the school system and the government uh, would not allow you know, the parents to hire uh, private tutors. But these days, you know, it is a common thing, especially in Pyongyang, that the parents would hire uh, private tutors, you know, and the the teachers uh, would visit the private homes for money. Uh, for instance, the general subjects like mathematics, uh, physics, chemistry, uh, these subjects, for instance, uh, the parents would pay uh, from 15 to 20 US dollar per month per each of the subject. That's and a whole lot considering your salary at the Foreign Affairs Ministry in North Korea was like three dollars. Yeah, that Oh, less than one dollar, you know. Oh, was it? Yes. But, wow. you know, you, if you want to upbring your children, you know, for a better education, then you have to earn a lot of money and to invest. Usually uh, in Pyongyang, for rich families or middle class families, they spend around uh, 150 US dollars per month for uh, children's uh, private tutoring, yes. Right. Um, now, Kim Il Sung University, I know that is um, one of, if not the most, a prestigious university in North Korea. Um, I was surprised myself to find out that because of this rise of defectors from North Korea to South Korea, yes. there is even a, like an alumni association well, yes, of Kim Il Sung University right. yes. here in Seoul, here in South Korea. Um, what are some of the most popular majors um, taken by North Korean students? Oh, there are many faculties in Kim Il-sung University and Kim Il-sung University uh, is actually uh, regarded as a pinnacle of North Korean education. The most uh, popular subjects in that university is the first foreign language and the law and uh, the philosophy uh, because if you are the graduate of foreign language department, then you can get a, a job uh, as a diplomat or you can get a job in foreign currency owning, you know, the companies. And if you are the graduate of law or philosophy, then uh, you can be a party officials or the, uh, you can work in prosecutor's office, you know, which uh, can give you a great influence or power in the society. So these subjects are the most popular ones in Kim Il-sung University. So because in law, there was like human rights law, yes. there's constitutional law, and I cannot imagine North Korea wanting to teach their students that kind of law because that could very well be used against the regime, no? No, they teach also human rights laws as well. But really? Yes, but the concepts of human rights is quite different, you see, uh, with the concepts you, you may have in, you know, for, in human rights. For instance, uh, 
the concept of human rights in uh, South Korea and Western countries is that the, the person's uh, private you know, independence and then the freedom of speech and expression are the main important part of human rights. But in North Korea, no, they say that the human being is uh, just one part of the community and North Korea's you know, slogan is one serve for all and all serve, serve for one. So they interpret the human rights uh, in, the, in the concepts of kind of community and collectiveness. So obviously North Korea, I suppose, puts a lot of weight in educating uh, its people. You yourself went to a high school um, in China, did you? Oh, yes. And, yes. and you studied at a very prestigious university as well. Are those the requirements to become a diplomat in North Korea? And did you have to take a certain kind of an examination to mm. serve in the Foreign Affairs Ministry? Or if you want to be a diplomat, you know, in North Korea, then the first criteria is the level of uh, foreign language speaking. Uh, that is the most important, you know, the criteria. And also, you have to be in the core class, you know, a member of core class. Political criteria plays main factor in selection process. But in North Korea, there is no such a system of, you know, diplomat examination, entrance examination or something like that. Job of diplomat is assigned by the party and government. Really? So you didn't apply for it? No. So you didn't have a choice? Oh, in North Korea, basically there is no concept of freedom of, you know, jobs. Right. Yeah. So what would you have chosen if you had the choice to choose your career? I mean, you must have had a dream job when you were young. Oh yes, uh, when I was young, my, uh, the dream uh, to be astronaut. Really? You know, as a young boy, because I was very interested in the movement of the stars, you know. My mother uh, strongly recommended me, you know, to learn foreign languages, and that could be a good way to improve uh, my life, that's why uh, I worked very hard uh, to learn foreign languages and uh, when I started learning English, you know, uh, my dream was to become a diplomat, you know, but these days things are changed, you know. In North Korea, you know, the young pe men, the people uh, do not want a job like diplomat. Why not? Uh, it's not Job of diplomat uh, cannot create, you know, uh, a lot of, you know, benefits in your uh, economic life. Oh, so it's not financially outstanding. That's right, you see. So in North Korea these days, you know, young people all want to get a job in companies, you know, where they can earn a lot of, you know, US dollars, you know. So we call it organizations. Uh, earning, you know, the hard uh, currencies, uh, and if you perform well, you know, the kind, that kind of, you know, uh, the illicit bonus is much, much, you know, the higher than the job of diplomat. I know uh, one of the key motivations of your defection to South Korea was uh, the education of your two boys. Yes. And I think I've heard that your two boys are brilliant. They're mm. very smart and intelligent. Um, they were actually educated in prestigious UK institutions. Do they have dreams? What kind of jobs do, do they want? At this moment, uh, they do not have any specific their future plan, but now they are preparing to go South Korean universities. My first son is interested in economics, mm. while my second son is interested in mathematics. I'm not sure, you know, what kind of jobs they would have taken after their gradation of the universities. That's quite different from yourself. You're yes. in more of like the arts area, right, with languages, and yes. they have more interest in the sciences area with economics and, and mathematics. They have uh, seen enough the job of uh, diplomats, you know, when uh, I was a North Korean diplomat. My sons complained a lot, 
you know, about me because they have seen that my life was uh, the double life, you know. Uh, I had to pretend to be loyal to the leadership and I have to pretend that, you know, North Korean system is the best system in the world. So whenever uh, they saw, you know, my activities, you know, uh, they didn't like it. So job of diplomats, you know, uh, don't have much freedom at all. So my sons uh, prefer uh, more freedom, you know, they do not want to be bound to a certain, you know, strict laws or so speaking of jobs, uh, it reminds me, you know, sluggish job market is almost a global norm these days. Yes. Of course, South Korean seniors in college, they start worrying about getting a job from, you know, from day one of their senior year, if not their junior year in college. Uh, we also hear that North Korea boasts itself for having 0% unemployment rate. Is that true? Oh, according to official you know, the statistics, it is reported that there is no, you know, the unemployment case in North Korea, but actually, no, there are uh, huge uh, unemployment problems, especially for uh, young, you know, the people. In, in North Korea, as I've said, you know, there is no concept of uh, freedom of jobs because the jobs are expected to be assigned by the party and the government. That's why usually in North Korea, once uh, you are assigned a certain job, then that is a lifelong job, you know. But these days, this kind of system is crumbling as well because the government is not providing uh, as it used to be. So everyone should take care of his own uh, daily life, you know, uh, his, everyone has taken, has to take care of his uh, private living. So these days, young people are looking f uh, for a job uh, where they can at least, you know, uh, make ends meet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So some people, you know, if even though the party and government assigned a uh, jobs for young people, but if young people uh, don't like it and some of them, you know, actually don't take it. So there are actually, you know, also the problem of unemployment in, in North Korea, but uh, the, the government does not uh, acknowledge the existence of this unemployment in North Korea. Now, you mentioned that, of course, a South Korean um pop culture, so South Korean soap operas, TV shows, celebrities are very popular, although under the table, but or under the blanket popular in North Korea. Do Are there young people in North Korea who actually want to become those kind of celebrities or actresses or whatnot? Uh, the people are only interested in money and those, you know, the film stars and the people in uh, the cultural industry are uh, not very well paid. So uh, the job of film stars or singers or musicians, you know, are not good jobs anymore in North Korea. Right. So it seems like everything has to do with money in North sure, Korea. Yes. Money is the most important thing in North Korea. And yes. it's quite ironic because North Korea claims itself to be a communist state, but in essence, when you get down to it, it's actually the very um, market-driven society North Korea seems to be. Yes, because for, uh, I think, you know, uh, for instance, you know, civil servants in North Korea are really poorly paid with monthly salary. They can't even afford uh, you see, one day, you know, the survival. Mm -hmm. That's why naturally, you know, uh, this kind of, you know, environment uh, makes the people only interested in money. Only money can sustain, you know, their life. So, ironically, North Korea is a communist or socialist society, but actually the interest of the people you know, or for money is much, much uh, stronger than 
the people who are actually living in capitalist countries. Now, South Korea just recently announced that it would invest around 800,000 U.S. dollars into special lectures, into designing special lectures across various universities nationwide to offer education on North Korea, as well as a possible reunification and the likes. What do you think, as, as an insider of North Korea, as an elite from North Korea, what would you propose that they actually learn from those classes? I think the most important thing for uh, the uh, university education for North Korean studies is to uh, teach the young generation the objective understanding about North Korea because I learned that uh, the people, especially young people in South Korea do not understand about uh, North Korea uh, and uh, to me uh, they look very naive, you know. So that's why I think only uh, teaching the young generation objectively about North Korea, then the future generation can find a real, realistic, you know, the options for reunifying the country. What is an objective view of North Korea? Oh, the, for instance, you know, the people, uh, especially young people in South Korea, uh, do not understand well, you know, about North Korea. For instance, uh, these days, uh, these young people are discussing uh, about the merit of uh, future reunification. And according to the recent poll, uh, only 67% uh, of young generation support the reunification, while the others don't. And uh, to young generation, these days, uh, the issue of reunification becomes a kind of issue of gain or loss, you know. Mm -hmm. But I don't think so because, mm -hmm. you know, now North Korea is moving further and further to uh, completion of nuclear weapons and Kim Jong-un regime uh, can use these nuclear weapons anytime on South Korea. So to South Korea, especially to young generation, reunification of the country is not the matter of gain or loss, but this is the matter of death or life, you know. Right, so I think it, it once again, it highlights the importance of education, whether it's education for the South Korean youth or North Korean youth, it's the importance of education in moving forward with an ideology or a country or a state and um, hopefully we'll be able to penetrate more information, more educational information into North Korea to, I suppose, have an impact on the, on the way the North Koreans perceive their regime and get a feel of the reality. Yes, I fully agree. I think this dissemination of information of both Koreas to each other is really important to narrow down, you know, the differences between North and South Korea. I think you nailed it. Thank you so much. I think you've done a very good job today and I really appreciate your professionalism. Thank you.